Uh, welcome to our 10 minute table talk, everyone. I am Pastor Holman. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Uh, I want to talk to you today about what I call the 16 I will commitments. Um, these are various statements that I put together a few years ago in order to enhance my own spiritual life, my personal life, my emotional life, my financial life, my life as a husband, my life as a father, my life as a pastor, um, to be better in those particular areas. And so I came up with 16 I will statements. And these are 16 I will statements, not I might, not I want to, not I wish to. These are 16 I will statements. And I want to tell these to you because I want you to, maybe if you can, cherry pick a few of them so that we can be the best people that God has called for us to be in the season by which God has called for us to do it. Uh, it says this, and I'll break these down after I go through the entire thing. It says, I am personally committing to a better life in Christ. I will honor my word. I will fully engage in the process. I will do the necessary work. I will honor my God. I will honor my family. I will honor myself. I will be a man of character. I will be a man of influence. I will be a godly man. I will seek God. I will learn of my purpose. I will be a servant of my God. I will actively participate in the ministry for the glory of God. I will lay aside my own selfish desires in exchange for God's plan. I will commit to the process of biblical discipleship. I will take a deep look into my personal self and deal with the issues of my past and my present to be all that God desires for me to be. These are 16 I will statements. Let me break these down in sections if I possibly can. It says I, that's Marcus D. Holman. You insert your name there. I am personally committing to getting better with God, to getting closer to God. I'm personally committing. Now, please hear this. I am committing. I'm making an active decision in the confines of my mind to do something. I'm not leaving it to chance. I'm not leaving it to happenstance. I'm not, these are not I might. This is not I might get around to it. I hope that I do. These are I will. This means active engagement. I want to be better with God. That's where I start off. I want to be better with God. The next 15 I wills are how I'm going to get better with God. Number one, I will honor my word. I will honor my word. I will keep my word. I will let my no be no and my yes be yes. I will not make a promise. I will not make a statement by which I cannot fulfill, meaning that I got to learn how to guard my tongue. I got to keep this tongue behind the teeth and behind the jaws by which God has said it and measure my words carefully because I will honor my word. I will honor my word. And then secondly, I will fully engage in the process and the process of becoming the best person that God has called for you to be is a process. It doesn't just happen overnight. It happens over a lifetime. It happens over day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. This is a process. This is a process. But I got to fully engage in the process if I want the process to work. Thirdly, I will do the necessary work in the process. As it is a process, it's going to be over a long period of time from me being in the place that I am to get into the place to where God wants me to do. But I must engage and do the work while inside of the process. If you don't do the work in the process, all you're simply doing is going through a process and processes without work do not work. So I'm going to honor my word. I will engage in the process and I will do the necessary work. Then I'm going to honor my God. I'm going to honor my God, meaning that if I claim to be a man of God, if I claim to be a woman of God, if I claim to be a Christian, I am going to hold a lifestyle that complements that. 
If I'm going to be a Christian, then I'm going to be a Christian, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, not just when I'm interacting with church folks, but I'm going to be a Christian as my lifestyle reflects to my Christianity. I will honor God. Secondly, uh, fifthly, I will be, I will honor my family. Now I want you to see the progression in this. I'm going to honor God first. God is first. I'm going to honor God first. I want my lifestyle to be a reflection of his glory. I want my lifestyle to be a reflection of the work that God is doing in me. I want to honor God. So when people look at Pastor Marcus D. Holman, I want them to say, look at what God is doing through him. That's first and foremost. Secondly, I want to honor my family. I want to honor my family. I want to honor my family. I want the name Holman to to ring forth. I want it to be a great name. I want it to be a legacy name. I want it to mean an, to be a name that actually matters. I'm going to honor my family. And then thirdly, I'll honor myself. So watch the progression. I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor my family. And then I'm going to honor myself. Do you see how that works? See, I'm going to honor God first, honor my family second, and then I come last. But me coming last is not me coming last, because if I honor God first and honor God secondly, then my name is, is, is honored amongst the midst. I will be a man of character. Now, let, let me give you two minutes here, a minute and 15 seconds. A man of character is the person that nobody else sees. That's not the public person. That's not the person sitting behind the podium. That's not the person on your job. No, the character person is the one that nobody sees except you. I will be a man of character, meaning that my character, that word character there, Greek word, is, is to cause an impression. It's dropping something on wet cement and leaving the impression. Okay, that's my character. It means to etch out. That's my character. And my character is often developed in the private places of my life. So I want to be a man of character. I want to be a man of influence. When I walk in the room, I want the room to notice. I want to carry weight when I walk into a room. Why? How is it going to carry weight? One, because I've honored my word. I'm engaging in the process. I'm doing the necessary work. I'm honoring God. I'm honoring my family. I'm honoring myself. I'm a man of character. And if I'm all of those things, then guess what else I'm going to be by default? A man of influence. I will be a godly man. I don't want to be a good man. I want to be a godly man. I want to be a man that is known because of his relationship with God and that he has walked this earth trying to get people connected to the one that ultimately created them. I want to be known as a godly man, not a good man. I will learn of my purpose. I don't want years upon years and decades upon decades passing me by, and I have no idea of what God has called for me to do. I want to learn of my purpose. I want to be a servant of God. I want to serve God in whatever capacity that God has assigned for me and then serve in that capacity to the best of my ability. I want to try to outserve my contemporaries when it comes to the kingdom of God. I want to serve God. I want to actively participate in the ministry for the glory of God. One of the things about participating in ministry is many people think that you got to be qualified to do this, that or the other. God doesn't call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. Your heart has to be into whatever God has called for you to do. If your heart is not in it, all you're simply doing is checking boxes. I want to actively participate in the ministry for the glory of God. I want to see people get closer and closer with God. I want to see relationships healed. I want to see marriages strengthened. I want to see parental between parents and kids strengthened in that. That's actively participating in the ministry for the glory of God. I want to lay aside my own selfish desires, y'all. And we all got them. And trust me, I got a lot of them. I, I got to be able to check my prejudices. I got to be able to check my selfish desires when I want to be at the forefront at the expense of everybody else. I got to check my selfish desires and exchange them for God's plan. But how do I do that? One, I got to know that I got selfish desires. You have selfish desires. You got to recognize those and then exchange them for God's plan. I want to commit to the process of biblical discipleship. Biblical discipleship. That means opening up the Bible, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, not just my five minute daily bread, not just my 15 commute uh, to work. I want to commit to the process of biblical discipleship. I want to be discipled by the Bible and everybody wants to be discipled by people. You're best to be discipled by the Bible. Let the Bible disciple you. 
And then lastly, and this is the most important one, by which this is the hinge that the door opens on. I got to take a deep look into my personal self and deal with the issues of my past and my present to be all that God wants me to be. Too many people are carrying around the issues of their past 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. You're still carrying around hurt, trauma and pain. And then you're offsetting that hurt, trauma and pain on people who have nothing to do with your hurt, trauma and pain. People are now the recipients of your anger because of what somebody did to you 10 years ago. And you can't grow. You can't make significant strides in life because you're still holding on to what somebody did to you when you was five, when you was 10, when you was 20, when you was 25. You got to be able to take a deep look into your own personal self and deal with the issues of your past. And everybody's got a past. Everybody's got a past. Everybody's got a past. Here's what you got to do. You got to go over to that door, that closet door that you got a padlock on. You got the couch in front of it. You done shoved your refrigerator in front of that door because behind that door is all the things that hurt you. You got to remove all that stuff that you blocked that door out with and you got to go into that deep, dark closet and you got to start dealing with the issues of your past. You got to start dealing with that trauma because if you don't deal with it, God can't use you to the capacity that he wants to. You got to be able to look at it. You got to be able to examine it. You got to be able to have real conversations with yourself so that you can move past that pain, hurt and trauma so that you can be the best person that God has called for you to be. So here it is. I'm personally committing to be a better person in Christ. I will honor my word. I will on, I will engage in this process. I will do the necessary work. I will honor my God. I will honor my family. I will honor myself. I will be a man of character. I'll be a man of influence. I will be a godly man. I will seek God. I will learn of my purpose. I will be a servant of my God. I will actively participate in the ministry for the glory of God. I will lay aside my own selfish desires in exchange for God's plan. I will commit to the process of biblical discipleship. I will take a deep, long look into my personal self and deal with the issues of my past, my present, so that I can be all that God has called for me to be. 16, I will statements that govern my life, and I try my best to honor those every day. Don't hit a 1,000 every day. Sometimes I'm hitting 20, right? But I'm always trying to keep these things relevant and right there in front of my face so that I'm not living by happenstance and living life by default. Um, actively move forward in your life so that you can be the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that God has called for you to be. Everybody, thank you for joining us here on our set of Studio B. Remember, like, follow, share, comment, subscribe. Be informed, be empowered, Studio B.